but we're completely open to any questions. We be transparent with you on this. We have no no uh, ulterior motives. We're not we're not trying to sell you anything. <laughs> A tour of the Fenner Reservoir at the request of Governor Eddie Calvo began with laughter this afternoon as members of the Governor's staff, Consolidated Commission on Utilities Vice Chair for the Guam Water Works Authority, Eloy Hara, and Democrat Senators Roy Respicio, Judy Guthertz, and Tom Atta got a first-hand look at what's become a significant point of contention in recent weeks. We want to take a look at a very valuable asset, a very valuable asset that is now controlled by the Navy that sooner or later will be uh, owned by the people of Guam. And it's just important to assess it, look at the condition of, 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 uh, of these facilities, uh, look what improvements have been made, and look what needs to be done. The one-hour tour consisted of the military explaining how FENA operates and how valuable a resource it is to the Navy. Regional Engineer and NAFAC Commanding Officer Captain Peter Lynch. The water system for the Navy is a lot broader than just the FENA Reservoir. Uh, the reservoir itself is a pretty large body of water from a man-made reservoir. Basically, a, man, a dam was built in the 50s, makes the, uh, the capacity of the FINA reservoir quite large. But those on the tour were less concerned with how much water FINA supplies and how it operates. Instead, committee chair on utilities and a former member of the CCU, Senator Tom Atta, sought answers as to why the assets couldn't be transferred to GWA. CCU member Eloy Hara chimed in that the agency is more concerned with having access to operate and maintain the FENA facility. So that's another fundamental issue that we've got or concern that we've got is to make sure that the GWA system is complying with all the EPA requirements. Captain Lynch admitting there's a fair amount of reluctance from the Department of Defense because of the ongoing litigation between the U.S. Department of Justice and GWA over the Clean Water Drinking Act and the agency's inability to meet all of the mandates in the stipulated order. Joint Region Marianas Commanding Officer Rear Admiral Paul Bashong stressed that despite claims that the military should just turn over FENA because it's excess, he said, quote, we rely on this water as mission critical. No way, no how that I could say this is excess and we need it for ships, submarines and military members and quite frankly for civilians too, end quote. There's also been discussion that transferring the assets of FENA would be fairly easy as the military previously transferred over power assets, but Captain Lynch explained that there are some significant differences. Transferring those assets around back to GPA was a relatively straightforward process. Here you've got the reservoir right in the middle of the naval station. The wells are all in the middle of the, uh, the FINA or the, the, the uh, NCTS, uh, NCTS Nick Tams. So much of that infrastructure is inherent inside the fence line, so it's much more complicated. Military buildup chair Senator Judy Guthertz also questioned how the transfer of FENA at the cost of $300 million managed to be included in the National Defense Authorization Act. Nobody ever asked us what we thought about anything. <laughs> I wasn't thinking and, of the uh, name, I was just thinking of the authorization. I think, I think the, the, the tag about payment was, was put in by staffers. I see. The island's elected leaders, as we reported, refused to pay a single penny for FENA and vehemently opposed the military having a seat on the Consolidated Commission on Utilities as mandated in the NDAA. Reporting for FENA for Guam's News Network, I'm Mindy Egan. Further to this story, senators that attended today's FENA tour were glad to see how the Navy operates and maintains the facilities. Military build-up chairperson Senator Judy Guthertz, who you heard from, says it's evident that the Guam Waterworks Authority cannot take over operating FENA until that agency is truly able to manage the facilities. Gigantic. It is very large. And uh, environmentally, it's quite obvious to me that they are ensuring that the environment up there is, uh, is protected and not abused. So that, that was also valuable for me to see. Utilities Oversight Chairman Senator Tom Atta said the tour also helped him understand that turning over FENA is much more complicated than the previous transfer of power assets to the island's public sector. I got a better sense that there's an improvement in the working relationship between the two water producers, the Navy and Guam Water Works Authority, and that they are working collaboratively, uh, unlike in the past. Uh, and what's important uh, now is that we maintain that collaborative working relationship and that 
each other knows what the needs are and how we can continue meeting the water demands of the entire island. 